AI is useful for many things. One of them is analysis. And one type of analysis that it can help you with is competitive analysis. This is Andy from Orbit Media, and I'm gonna walk through with you now three methods for using AI to do competitive analysis at the top the, and the middle and the bottom of the funnel. We're gonna start with SEO competitive analysis, evaluating our search rankings compared to our competitors. We're gonna do some branding and messaging and positioning analysis by giving it our home pages and have it think about our site strategically and where we fit into the market. And then finally, we're gonna use it to understand the scope and size of the website and the content program behind it and compare our sites to others in terms of the page count, formats, content programs, and strategy. Should be fun, let's jump in. Okay, first let's start with the competitive analysis for search. Now, in this case, I'm gonna give AI another tool. This is a keyword gap tool. I'm gonna to use SEMrush for that. Uh, other tools, AHREF has one called Content Gap. Uh, and it's really just going to compare uh, our home pages search rankings to the search rankings of other pages. Here's what that report looks like. So I've simply plugged in my site at the top and my competitor sites. And by using exact URL, I'm going to focus on the home pages. I don't need the whole site. I just want to do one page because that's going to help me narrow in some specific SEO edits for this one URL. Uh, and then if you scroll down, you're going to see all the rankings for all those home pages and who ranks for what things that the others do not. That's basically the gaps, right? So I'm gonna click all to get all the phrases and I'm gonna export that. Now, when I export this file, it's gonna have a lot of rows and columns that I don't need, so I'm going to clean it up. I don't wanna give AI more than it needs, <laughs> so I'm gonna remove some of the columns and I'm gonna remove some of the rows. Here's what I'm ending up with. This is, these are all the phrases and you can see my site here, Orbit Media, we build websites and our competitors one, two, and three, what phrases they rank for. So really, I've removed a bunch of irrelevant columns and rows already, and I've cleaned up these headers so it knows what to analyze. Next, I upload that to AI. Here's the spreadsheet, and here's the prompt. Your roles and skills, you're an SEO expert. You use keyword ranking data to do competitive analysis. What I'm giving you is a SEMrush keyword report. It compares our homepage rankings to others. Your goal is to help us rank for more of the phrases that our competitors rank for, but we do not. So go conduct that competitive analysis. It comes back and actually summarizes it nicely. And it picked some based on its own scoring method that we have both that are gaps for us and have a combination of difficulty, search volume, and likelihood of conversion, which it's using cost per click as of a, a proxy for that. So these are phrases that, we, that they rank for, but we don't, right? And then when we go to the next step and ask for recommendations, if you don't do SEO every day, some of these are pretty good. It's suggesting that we focus on high commercial value, moderate difficulty phrases. It asks us to take a look at location-based schema, build some more case studies, add some more service pages. Actually clever. What's the next step? The next step would be to go edit our page to better target these key phrases that are best opportunities for us. Now that we know where the battlefield is, we're gonna go fight on the, compete in the, for those key phrases. To do that, we have to give it our page. I'm gonna give it a full page screenshot in this case. I'm uploading the home page, and I'm asking it to write new paragraphs. There's the prompt. Write three new paragraphs with subheads that align with the existing copy, but incorporate some of the key phrases that, we rec that the AI recommended above. Highlight the phrases. Okay, up to you. Decide, <laughs> is this good? Is it bad? Is it off? Is it on target? It's a start. Then you go edit that. Okay, that was a bit of both the analysis and the next steps, which is interesting. For the next method, we're gonna give AI a different starting point. We're gonna give it sitemaps. Sitemap is a file, I'm not talking about the sitemap on your website, the one on the foot of the people click to see what all your pages are. I'm talking about the XML sitemap. It's a very special and specific thing. It's important for search and how the internet works. It's a file that you put on your site that shows you where all the URLs are. It's like just a list, sometimes categorized, like in this case, this one was generated by Yoast. Of, where, of all your pages and their names. Now, pretend for a minute that we're a bookstore, we're a college bookstore, we're planning a redesign, we're thinking about product categories, and we wanna compare ourselves to a big player, right? Barnes & Noble, they do big college bookstores. What are their product categories? How do they structure themselves? There's an easy way to find that out. Just go to the bookstore's website slash sitemap.xml, and there's a big sitemap. I don't even need to download this because it's always at that link, right? I can give, I can just give this to the AI. Now, pretend we're this little bookstore here, a small independent college bookstore. This is where our sitemap lives. Let's give these to AI and ask it to, to do some analysis. Okay, AI, here are the links to the sitemaps. I want you to conduct an analysis of the website's scope and depth 
types of pages, number of product pages, differences in product categories, niches, content marketing. List the strengths and gaps of these two websites. List untapped opportunities for us. Now, based on the inputs, AI then summarizes the strengths and the gaps of these two brands compared to each other, which is pretty interesting. So it can see the URLs, the names of those, basically the types of pages of the sitemap, and it identifies quickly that one of these sites gives limited information on the community engagement, but the other one actually has an opportunity to better engage by showing that this site aligns with the college mission and that all the transactions at this bookstore support the mission of the university, really community focused. Impressive to get that just from that one input, just the two sitemaps. Next, it provides untapped opportunities, suggesting that we create exclusive merchandise. A great idea, actually. Or feature students. Yeah, we can show how more, we're more human and more connected to the student body. Or partner with various college departments. Yeah, maybe that would work. And then we can ask it for a visualization. I love this. Because it has an index now of all the URLs on both websites, I'm going to ask it to draw a bar chart showing the number of products across various product categories on the two websites, which it does beautifully. So you can see quickly that brand uh, has a big section on textbooks. Really, we don't. But we have a section on residence hall supplies, which maybe they don't. The kind of a different approach to tech and electronics, apparel. The size and shape of these websites become immediately visible on this little chart uh, just by giving it those two inputs. Only takes a minute. Absolutely a point of view, basing big decisions based on this, but I am getting some ideas and uh, it's a way to quickly see the difference in scope of these two UR domains. Next, I'm going to give AI two home pages, full page screenshots of two home pages, and I'm going to have it do some competitive analysis to understand really how these two brands position themselves, our site and another site, just based on that. Here's how it works. I'm going to upload these full page screenshots. So I'm, I've created these using the Chrome extension Go Full Page, and here they are side by side. And my prompt sounds like this. You're a brand messaging and positioning expert, and you're skilled in understanding the position of a brand within a market just based on the home page of that brand. Instructions. I'm giving you two home pages of brands in an industry vertical. Compare and contrast the messaging and positioning of these brands. Identify the key themes and positioning of each, and include a detailed but concise summary. Okay, let's see what it does. I renamed one of them Competitor Inc. Here's how they position themselves. Gives us a sense for who they are and the tone they use and their target audience. Comes up pretty well. You can see the navigation and see the, the copywriting, assuming it's brand aligned. And then I gave it our own, right? Here's Orbit Media, how we position ourselves, right? Which is actually quite different from theirs. We're focusing on more of a personal touch, trying to be friendly and approachable, providing lots of educational value and who we sell to. It gleans or infers from just from what we gave it, uh, the target audience for each, the size of the target of the companies that we sell to. They're a bit more enterprise, we're a bit more midsize. And then it's gonna compare them, but a little summary here for us. The one positions themselves as a full service agency, while well, we position ourselves as a boutique agency with a more personalized approach, measurable outcomes, and human connections. They have a more polished and professional tone. I'll agree. And ours is a more conversational and relatable tone, I hope. And that their graphics are more polished, while we have show more of the human side, the people, the testimonials. Really interesting how just giving it a homepage, but really all this should be in the context of the audience, right? Brands aren't what I think of myself, it's what other people think of us how they perceive and remember us in the context of uh, their needs. So I'm going to upload our ideal client profiles or uh, a persona, and then we're going to give it the persona and give it this prompt and have it look at these from that perspective of the visitor. Here's the prompt. I'm giving you a persona, create a table, showing the extent to which the messaging of each of these brands aligns with the information needs of the persona. That's the game, right? Aligning with information needs. In the left column, list the persona's prioritized information needs and then create a column for each brand on the right. Within the cells of these columns, rate the extent to which the messaging aligns with the persona's interests and concerns. Okay, it comes back. Fun, in this case, it actually gave like star reviews. <laughs> you never know what it's gonna do. And hopefully all of this aligns better with us because we gave it the two home pages. If our brand isn't better aligned with our target than the competitor, we've got a problem, we, need, we got some work to do. But let's keep going. 
Let's give it some more home pages. Let's do a bigger competitive analysis and look at the larger context because uh, my buyer isn't just looking at one or two options, right? They're surveying the whole landscape before making a decision about who to hire or even who to contact. So I give it two more competitors. Full page screenshots, another. I'm giving you two more home pages. Create a color-coded heat map matrix showing the extent to which the messaging of all four of these brands aligns or does not align with the questions and concerns of this persona. Okay, what it comes back with, there it is. Let's zoom in. A heat map of messaging alignment with the persona's information needs. There I am in the second column. You can see strong alignment, for all fives and fours. I am doing a better job of servicing the information needs of my visitor prior to them even becoming a prospect on my website by speaking in the directly. My brand had better be better aligned with my persona than my competitor's brands. Okay, we just looked at three different ways to do competitive analysis, three totally different inputs uh, to get a perspective. Again, I'm not really looking for perfect accuracy. I'm not really worried about bias. I'm just want a point of view, right? I sometimes joke, AI might as well stand for another input, right? I don't need for it to be perfect. I'm just looking at it to quickly get a perspective on how well I fit into this market based on the size of my competitors' websites, right? The positioning, the messaging, the design on these websites. So hope this was useful, really fun, to kind of some experiments, uh, but the kind of thing that I've actually been doing quite a bit just as I meet people and, and talk to them about their brands and uh, getting that quick analysis or point of view. And then we look at it together and decide what we identified as very great, good opportunities and what we just dismiss as trivial or, or, or unimportant or not prioritized at the moment. Again, Andy from Orbit Media, if you know anybody who's trying to do a uh, quick competitive analysis or looking for new ways to experiment with AI, we'd be grateful if you forward this along. Uh, we'll keep making these and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.